Now, Stefan will talk about our Western diseases normal. Thank you, Madhvi, and uh, thank you for organizing this event at the Royal Society of Medicine, and thank you all for coming. I'm a family physician. I have been working uh, with patients half-time, and I've been a researcher half-time. Um, I would talk about normality. So um, when we get older, we tend to get bigger, as we all know. Uh, most of us struggle with uh, overweight, and it seems to most of us uh, as almost uh, a natural law that when we have food in excess, we overconsume it. There is no such natural law. I I'll, will come back to that. There is the thrifty genotype hypothesis, which is uh, probably not correct. I'll come back to that. We accumulate fat in various uh, tissues. When it's in subcutaneous fat, it's not that bad, but when it's uh, in the abdomen, it's worse. And even worse is that uh, we get atherosclerosis, uh, accumulation of fat in the arteries, which is more pronounced and more common than uh, everyone is aware of. So by the age of 50, the majority of Westerners have fairly advanced coronary atherosclerosis in the arteries of the heart. There is lipotoxicity, ectopic lipid deposition inside various cells, in this case the heart, uh, better known in the liver, called fatty liver, in the pancreas, causing, uh, in the end, type 2 diabetes, in skeletal muscle tissue, uh, in uh, the kidneys, uh, and... Um, possibly in other organs as well. And also we have another kind of age-related degener degeneration, uh, um, disarray of the small muscle uh, fibers, uh, in the end possibly causing uh, atrial fibrillation or heart failure. We have osteoporosis, calling, ca causing a weakness of the bone. In Sweden, every second woman will, in her lifetime, break at least one bone due to osteoporosis. When I was young, I thought, well, this is normal biology. Then, in 1985, I read a paper by Boyd Eaton and Melvin Connor in the New England Journal of Medicine about paleolithic nutrition, uh, stating, among other things, that hunter-gatherers who still, in modern times, have pursued an ancestral-like lifestyle avoid Western disease. And I thought this was quite remarkable. And they considered evolution and of course we should. Evolution shaped us during, well, for let's say a couple of million years. Actually, it's much more than that. When we have a good working system that has been shaped 100 million years ago, it, uh, we keep it. So uh, if you compare mammals, we have very much in common in terms of physiology and, uh, uh, and um, well, nutrition-related issues. If we compare different species, we find some differences, but on the whole, we are very like each other. If you give a piece of food to a human, uh, irrespective of ethnicity, 
essentially the same things happen in the digestive system, in the physiology, etc. There are some variation, uh, some differences, and uh, sometimes these differences um, evoke a lot of uh, discussions, but the main point here is that uh, uh, we are very similar, most of us. And when uh, ancestral, uh, when, when traditional populations uh, migrate and start pursuing a modern lifestyle, we see the same metabolic syndrome everywhere. As Mylan point, my pointed out, there are some differences. We, as Europeans, are slightly less vulnerable than most other uh, populations. So the dietary shifts that shape most of our genome happened more than 200,000 years ago. And uh, another reason, as Mylan said, uh, is that plants protect themselves with phytochemicals. Uh, the highest concentration, of course, is in the seeds uh, and the low, uh, some of the lowest concentrations you find in ripe flesh of uh, fruits. Because primates and uh, birds have helped fruit-bearing trees to spread their genes, and uh, the, the trees have no reason to cause harm to, to those uh, who eat the, the, the ripe flesh, but they uh, protect the, the seeds as much as they can. Uh, if hunter-gatherers died before age 40, we would not be so interested in diseases that uh, cause problems after the age of 40, but that's not the case. It's, uh, it's a myth that, that hunter-gatherers don't live beyond 40. Uh, here you have the age at death for various populations, and uh, hunter-gatherers, uh, there are some of the, them who die at a fairly high age. Uh, and this is a kind of misconception that uh, uh, they are all gone by for age 45. That's certainly not the case. So when I went to the library, I was uh, intrigued by the fact that uh, science is problematic because physiology is so complex. Epidemiology is so confounded. Uh, controlled intervention trials are rarely blinded, and evolutionary biology is rarely applied. And I was troubled by the fact that there is much other influence on uh, the, the usual conceptions, uh, such as belief systems, alliances, uh, funding, etc. And we could talk for hours about these things uh, uh, and it's very interesting to see how influential uh, gurus have uh, um, been driven by agendas, uh, but uh, we will take that some other time. In any case, I thought this might concern myself as well. I had a normal blood pressure and I changed my diet. I started eating a Paleolithic diet and I got a uh, the blood pressure of hunter-gatherers, and I retained the, the weight of my youth, uh, 64 kilos, uh, and I uh, have that weight uh, today. Uh, but at some times I increased it when I made too much compromise, uh, but uh, now I'm back again. And I went to the Trobriand Islands. Uh, Kitava is one of the Trobriand Islands in Papua New Guinea, north of Australia. And these people are traditional horticulturalists um, close to the sea. Uh, the, there were 2,300 inhabitants, uh, six sorry, 6% uh, older than 60 years, uh, enough of elderly to uh, make valid comparisons. They, their staple foods were yam, sweet potato, taro, tapioca, a lot of fruit, uh, regular fish intake, uh, some nuts, especially coconuts, and leafy vegetables, but no Western food. So 75% of the calories in Sweden today come from food that they don't eat and that were not available during human evolution. 
their level of physical activity is higher than the average in Western countries, uh, something like a construction worker. So um, yes, it's good to be physically active, but I think uh, diet is more uh, important in order to explain the striking absence of Western disease. Uh, myocardial infarction is non-existent. Uh, we can talk about the, the methods and the details if you like later, but uh, for now I ask you just uh, to uh, uh, believe me. We've made systematic um, interviews around the island and this is consistent with observations uh, made by uh, two German physicians, uh, Horst Jüptner, who worked there for five years in the 60s and 70s, and Wolf Schiefenhöfel, who has been doing uh, uh, human ethology research for 20 years, and he has seen uh, more than 2,000 patients, and they both um, confirm the absence of myocardial infarction. And this has been seen in uh, other parts of Melanesia, in Africa, in South America, in the Arctic. So it's fairly consistent with other uh, similar surveys. Stroke is also non-existent, which is also consistent with other uh, observations. When the British uh, came to East Africa, Kenya and Uganda became British protectorates. And um, from the 1920s and onwards, they saw total absence of ischemic stroke and uh, hemorrhagic strokes. And there was a series of 269 consecutive uh, cases of acute neurologic disease at Kampala, the capital of Uganda, uh, and not a single ischemic or uh, hemorrhagic stroke, uh, not the kind of stroke uh, we refer to when we uh, talk about stroke. They had some, is uh, some infectious, uh, strokes, but uh, but uh, not what we call stroke. And then uh, stroke became the most common neurologic disease, parallel to an increase in hypertension, change in lifestyle, etc. And now we see history repeating itself in Papua New Guinea. This 47-year-old man has total hemiplegia, aphasia. From one day to the next, he suddenly is struck by this disease, which is so obvious, so uh, it's evident to everyone this is a new disease. We have measured uh, various markers, surrogate variables like blood glucose. Diabetes type 2 is absent. So the red uh, dots are uh, the ketavans, uh, uh, blood glucose, and the, the yellow ones is a random Swedish uh, population. The ketavans are two standard deviations below the Swedes. And insulin, fasting insulin, uh, there is more of an overlap, uh, but the trend is that it, it decreases with age while it slightly increases in uh, Sweden. Uh, body weight, the black ones are, so this is body mass index. Uh, for females and for males. Uh, the black ones are the Kitavans, the gray ones are the Swedes. If by the age of 50, uh, Swedish woman would have the BMI of the Kitavans, she would weigh 22 kilos less than she actually does. And if you then, uh, 19 kilo difference for men. If you then adjust for differences in uh, fat percentage, it's even, a bigger difference. Waist circumference, uh, you see, it's not normal biological uh, aging to uh, increase your waist circumference, even if, when you have food in excess. I I'll come back to that. Hypertension is absent. Diastolic blood pressure does not increase with age, and uh, they are much lower on average. There is some overlap between uh, with regard to systolic blood pressure, uh, and there is a slight increase with age after age 50 uh, in systolic uh, uh, blood pressure. Thank you. So here we have um, 
The, the various uh, markers, most of them that we measured, uh, expressed as standard scores. So the size of the, the bar uh, tells you how many standard deviations below the Swedish mean that the Kitavans are. So two standard deviations below the mean means for BMI 20.3 uh, instead of 24.5 as for Swedish males and uh, females to the left. And you see that uh, BMI, diastolic blood pressure, leptin, glucose, um, and to some extent insulin and uh, um, yeah, Briefly, you could say the metabolic syndrome is uh, very clearly uh, absent in this population. And these findings, despite a striking absence, uh, sorry, uh, this striking absence, despite a fair amount of elderly, so 6% are above 60 years of age, it's enough to be able to make valid uh, comparisons. Our age estimates are based on historic events um, like the Second World War. This is a, a Japanese sea wreck uh, and uh, the arrival of Cyril Barnevald Cameron to the island in 1912. We could ask people, how old were you when he came? Well, I was like this boy. No, you were not, uh, because I was not born then, said someone close to him. And uh, we think we could get rather uh, close to their actual ages, um, and this is the gravestone of uh, Cameron. He stayed there until his death in 1966. There are no indications of genetic resistance, uh, and we see this worldwide. When such populations uh, transition to a modern lifestyle, they get at least as much of these problems. This is a man, age 55, he grew up, or 45 maybe, now I forgot, he looks more like 45. Uh, he grew up on the island and he, um, uh, when he was uh, in his 20s, he moved to the island, to the capital, and now worked as a businessman there. He, he had the largest waist circumference and the highest blood pressure and the highest plasminogen activator inhibitor, one level. 75% um, of them are smokers. It's probably not enough to smoke uh, to get uh, cardiovascular disease. And uh, uh, this is something you see in uh, Mediterranean countries as well. There is no correlation in the seven country study be between uh, smoking habits and cardiovascular disease as we see in Northern Europe and uh, the UK, etc. Energy expenditure is high but not extreme. Uh, saturated fat intake is high from coconut, uh, while total fat intake is low. Uh, one of the dissidents, uh, when he wrote a, a bestseller uh, that was to become a bestseller, uh, uh, he uh, phoned me and uh, he was very interested in the high intake of saturated fat. But then he heard about their high intake of carbohydrate and he dropped it because it did not fit with his um, hypothesis that uh, carbs are bad. Uh, so this is one example. There are many others where traditional populations have a very high starch intake uh, and nevertheless escape diabetes and the metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease. Please note that uh, although starch and other um, carbohydrates uh, increase blood sugar in glucose intolerant persons. Uh, this is not the same as uh, that it would cause glucose intolerance. And humans have uh, a relatively high capacity to digest starch compared to other uh, mammals. Um, so we have the Eskimos, are low-carb eaters. We have the Kitavans and uh, Australian Aborigines and other populations that have, are, uh, have a very high carbohydrate intake. But uh, what they all have in common is that grains and dairy and the refined fat and sugar, which provide the bulk of energy for Western populations, are absent. And then salt intake is low as well.
They have constant food surplus. The thrifty genotype states, the, the hypothesis states that uh, humans are not capable of controlling their energy intake. We need regular starvation or at least uh, de deprivation of calories in order not to become overweight. Uh, and everyone cites it uh, as if it were true, but uh, why would a uh, hunter-gatherer not have this capacity? They certainly, at times, come to live in under circumstances where there is food in excess for considerable time, let's say a generation, and then suddenly there is some animals trying to eat you and you cannot run away. It's, uh, excuse me, but it's uh, not uh, thoroughly um, thought about this. Uh, and, and the people who um, uh, promote this hypothesis, they don't check. Do hunter-gatherers really have uh, regular starvation? No, not always. Uh, so... Um, I don't believe in that hypothesis. I, th I think it's something with certain foods triggering overconsumption. So uh, the, the typical Western foods are absent. And when traditional populations migrate or transition their lifestyle to a modern lifestyle, you see a, a, a shift to the right of the distribution curve. So blood glucose or blood pressure uh, shifts to the right so that everyone after some time has a higher blood pressure and blood glucose than they would have if they had not migrated. When we look at uh, Western populations, uh, people within the Western populations, we uh, regard them as people with a low, normal or high risk. And then sometimes uh, uh, we cut the axis and uh, show it something like this. Uh, and the patient is told that your blood pressure is normal or is that your blood pressure is low and uh, they go happily away and uh, do not consider that um, the risk that they have if they are normal or low risk is much, much higher than uh, in these traditional populations. So what I say to my patients is that uh, your blood pressure is normal, uh, which means you have a normal risk for uh, heart uh, attacks or um, stroke, which are normal diseases in our country, but they don't exist in these traditional populations. And then they get hooked and they, their first question might be, but they don't get very old, uh, do they? And so we are on uh, a track that uh, often leads to very, very good results. I was asked by the European Heart Journal 10 years ago to comment on the fact that uh, if you measure blood pressure and blood lipids in a random population, in this case the Norwegian population, you find that after age 60 most of them would need medication. And uh, the people writing the paper in that same issue of the journal uh, thought there must be something wrong with uh, the guidelines, uh, but my title was Who Wants to be Normal? Uh, before I end, I just want to mention one of the studies in that meta-analysis in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition uh, was uh, the first study that we uh, did, uh, the first study made randomized, the first randomized control trial with a Paleolithic diet uh, versus a consensus diet or a Mediterranean-like diet in this case, uh, where uh, patients at the coronary care unit, then you are uh, rather motivated and listen to <laughs> what uh, we say about uh, diet, were randomized to one of these two groups and after 12 weeks, uh, glucose tolerance uh, normalized. So this is the, the area under the glucose curve after oral, uh, um, after intake of oral glucose before and 12 weeks after. So fasting glucose went from 6.8 to 5.1 and the area under the curve was normalized but not uh, significantly in the other group. 
and uh, after six weeks, there was some improvement in the Paleolithic group and some in the consensus group with regard to change in area under the glucose curve. But despite that waist circumference continued to decrease in both groups, the uh, uh, change in area under the glucose curve did not improve further. So perhaps, this is a small trial, but perhaps there is something beyond uh, weight loss uh, when you want to uh, improve your glucose uh, tolerance. So my conclusions are that evolutionary theory is fundamental to biology, including nutritional science, and that nature is not benign. Normal is not the same as optimal. And I think we need to uh, ask ourselves if common uh, foods may cause common diseases. Thank you.